At the age of 36, Zizipo Nyanga handles a fund of one billion rand with an aim towards eradicating poverty and creating real jobs. Zizipo is the CEO of the Masisi Zane Fund, having funded 200 enterprises and over 40,000 micro enterprises. Uh, she's in studio with us now to have a conversation. So good to have you with us, and welcome to Morning Live. Thank you, Leah. All right, let's let's understand a little bit what what the what the fund actually does. So the fund is aimed at uh, increasing entrepreneurship levels in South Africa, but we focus on rural areas, peri-urban and uh, townships where people ordinarily wouldn't get funding from commercial banks and also would be forced to migrate to big cities to look for jobs. So we seek to uh, revive economic activity in those areas by funding businesses that want funding from 500,000 and above in franchising, agribusiness, manufacturing and contract finance. That's a fantastic initiative. And I mean, from, from where I'm looking at the numbers here, out of the 200 enterprises and over 40,000 micro enterprises. Uh, this is what you've worked with. I mean, how, how have you changed their lives? I mean, how many people have sort of gone from one place into a completely different other place with your help? We've changed a lot of lives through job creation and uh, creating business owners. So we've created over the years over 8,000 jobs. The, the impact uh, is really felt in rural areas where people have land, for example, that is lying idle and they don't know what to do yeah. uh, with it. So in the KZN and, uh, and Eastern Cape area, for example, we've invested over 100 million in primary agriculture. And now we are developing those emerging farmers into the value chain of agribusiness to access better opportunities within the agri space. We've also funded a lot of franchises in the fuel stations, food retailers in the rural areas. You will notice that there's a lot of malls or shopping centers that are now built in small towns and rural areas so people don't have to travel a lot to go get food. So there's lots of opportunities for entrepreneurs in infrastructure development where government is spending a lot of money to build infrastructure in remote areas. So we find contract, uh, contracts in that area where people have a contract but they don't have the money yeah. to fulfill that contract. So you're sitting with a fund of a billion rand. I mean, this is what you manage. Talk to us about the, 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 how people A, can get access to it and also how you actually get the funding. So the most important thing is to uh, have a business plan, but also knowing who you are selling the product or service to. A lot of uh, people come to us wanting to start a business and they have a business idea. But if, for example, you take uh, a farmer in agriculture wanting to plant, you can plant the maize, but who are you going to sell it to? Indeed. So it's important to understand uh, the viability of your business and uh, dra draft that business plan yourself and know who you're going to sell the products to. So the business plan is one thing that we are looking for. And if you don't have owner's contribution, we are able to work with you and uh, find a way of working with strategic partners who can uh, offer grant funding to make sure that we structure the transaction accordingly such that it affords to repay the debt. Yeah, and I mean, that is, it's an, it's an incredible thing. But as a CEO of an agricultural and manufacturing fund, are you worried at all about the impact of, of the legislation, if it does come into effect, uh, in, with regard to land and the expropriation of land without compensation? Or do you think this will actually have positive benefits? At this stage, I think, I, I can't say whether it will have positive or negative, but I think it's important for funds like us to start doing the work now such that whatever the legislation comes out to be, we are seen to be able to do the work that we need to do. For instance, in rural areas, people have land. If it's possible for government to give people title deeds, it will help them access finance. It will help them build businesses that are sustainable in the future. So we work with government, uh, for, for instance, the rural development and uh, agriculture departments, where we find um, entrepreneurs in rural, in, in rural areas in farming. So we're looking forward to the positive side of the legislation but at this stage we are doing the work we're excited to be making a difference in the meantime yeah and I think what you're saying is so vitally important it's not it's not the, the fact that you're given land it's that you have a business plan of what you're going to do with this land yes. and that's exactly what you are what, what you're funding what you're helping people with is that the model 
and to actually make this beneficial towards you because, you know, to have land and to have nothing to do with it, that's probably worse. Yes, and I must say, Len, in the space we play in, we've bent a lot of our fingers in the agriculture space because it's a tough environment. Yeah. Someone would have the land but not necessarily have the technical expertise yeah. to and make skills. that land productive. So we do um, direct lending and uh, business support to make sure that we walk the journey with the entrepreneurs that we have funded. Yeah, and I know that this is, uh, we, we're heading into... Um, entrepreneurship week I think it's between the 12th and the 16th of November and there's a focus uh, on uh, manufacturing and agro processing with um, with the Minister of Small Development Lindiwe Zulu but uh, I, I will talk more about that as we approach it but I do think that people would love to get hold of you so how do we get hold of you if they are wanting to get funds I know you've spoken about criteria but perhaps give us your details so they can find us on Twitter and uh, Facebook uh, at Masisiza Nefant also on our website, masisizanefund.co.za, and also on the Old Mutual website, uh, oldmutual.co.za. Excellent. So there's a, an affiliation with Old Mutual and a partnership yeah. with them. That's fantastic. I mean, this is something that really, I think, will appeal to a lot of our viewers. It's Izipo Nyanga talking to us about this uh, Masisizane Fund, which deals with agriculture and manufacturing. And what it does is offer access to would-be entrepreneurs in the sector that changed so many people's lives already. And uh, hopefully you can be the next one to have your life changed by them. All right, we take a break. It's 17 minutes before the top of the hour. And uh, we're talking about the SABC and an internship project that they are looking into. So do stay tuned for those details. Are losing the best of kids, people that are fathers or pastors that come from a church. No taxi, nothing. We were not notified. I get to town, there's nothing. I Need to know more about the markets? This is where it all starts. At the SAPC's headquarters in Oakland Park in Johannesburg, South Africa. We analyze, report, crunch the numbers, call in the experts, package the news and bring you critical global market updates from the JSE. The continent's leaders in liquid market movement and the fastest growing secondary listings made right here. Small businesses, the backbone of the economy, with South Africa's very high unemployment rate, it said that 90% of new jobs could come from this sector. Every weekday afternoon on DSTV Channel 404. <laughs> 